Okay, we got the E3 error code. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut this off and pretty much isolate things. So on the remote here, I've got the outside unit turned. It, it, the mode side is set to fan. And I've got the fan on and just the fan only, the inside fan. And uh, what I did was I came over here and put my hand in front of it. Right now the fan should be running, but we have no, no fan on the inside unit. So I'm gonna get this thing opened up, grab my meter and see if we've got a bad board or if we got a bad motor. Just some metal. So we're getting the correct voltage feeding this unit. It's 124 volts, 125. Nothing's dropping out. And then our DC power coming out here. We've got 4.5, which is within range from the outside unit, from the board, from outside. So I think we might have a bad motor here. First thing I'm gonna check is make sure that, of course, the motor is free and can spin freely. So I have seen where they get hung up for whatever reason. And the motor is spinning freely. So now I'm gonna have to take this, uh, take the whole face off this unit so I can gain access to that blower motor pin and uh, verify. I'm gonna ohm it out, check the resistance on the fan motor and see what I got there. First things first, I'm gonna shut power down. So you just gotta pop those two clips on the front here the four clips on the top and the three screws and you can you can see you can see the whole unit now hell shut off the whole house i don't care <laughs> okay so we got the power turned off here and now i've got to gain access to this board and uh see where this motor plugs in at you can see that motor inside there it's a DC motor, you see right there, DC 140V. And these DC motors are very prone to surges, power surges, uh, lightning strike. You know, this gentleman had a lightning storm, and this is a newer unit as you can see, but now the blower motor is not running. It's throwing an E3 error code. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take this, this panel here, this, this, this whole section comes off with a couple screws and that way I can get access to this motor this motor pin that goes to the board so I can ohm out the, the motor here so you got a screw on the top okay so we have a little clip up top there's a, there's a screw to the left there and then you got a clip to the right you just push down and it releases it Alright, so I really didn't have to pop the whole thing off. You live and you learn. Uh, this piece here has two prongs on the front right here. You press them out and you can pull this whole reset button out. And uh, then you can gain access to your motor. Uh, your motor plug. This is my molded plug for the motor here. And what I'm going to do is you always want to disconnect the, the molded plug from the unit while you're testing it because then you'll pick up on values of the board itself. And we want to eliminate, it's either one or the other. So now we gotta see how this pin connector comes out of here. And it uh, looks like it's got a, a pin holding it in place. I definitely don't make this easy on you. And I would not recommend using a blade. <laughs> <laughs> the owner of this unit here is having a 
an OSHA heart attack. He was a he was a OSHA the OSHA king, so he's probably down there, you know, he's laughing, but <laughs> Okay, so now we can we got this retainer clip out of here. Sit it to the side. You don't want to lose that. It'll work without it, but uh, you got to sleep tonight, so you definitely want to know where that's at. Now we can get our plug here. And you don't want to pull by the wires when you do this because you don't want to pull up the wire harness or the wire out of the harness. This is always fun here. I may have to grab my pliers. Let me get a good grip on this. You can focus on hitting that. Just rock it back and forth. Okay, so now we got the, the motors disconnected. I'm pretty sure that's our culprit. It's gonna be the motor, but I'm just gonna verify. I'm gonna go to our own settings here. And see if I can find some metal. There we go. Out of the holes. Okay, so now you see my I don't have my set of small prongs on me, but what you can do, uh, you can flip this over. And you can already see off rip that the, the black and red are showing nothing. So let's go from red and white or black and white and we're not showing anything so something inside that motor is open could be an internal switch i'm not sure i do my research on that but i know that this uh Wow. Okay, so this DC motor uh, that we have inside here is, is bad. Um, what I can do to also verify this is I can turn the power back on, uh, turn the, the unit to fan, fan only, or cool, doesn't matter. Uh, but if you turn it to fan, you'll get more of a, of a run time and test and see if I'm getting signal from this board to this motor. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do that just to verify. I'm just gonna double check myself. And uh, so I, my meter is good. I uh, guess sir. Yeah, if you can turn the power on, you are the man. Okay, so he's, he's turned the power back on. We are live in five. You probably can see better now. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find this remote Go down here and turn the fan to the on position. And you want to get your meter set up in DC. Because that outside board, or that this inside board sends DC power. Okay, you got to reset it to get it turned on. I can hear the louvers opening up. So right now it should be sending power to that board. So as you can see, we're getting DC voltage. It's running outside here. Is it? Yep. So we got our outside unit is running. Uh, the inside unit's trying to run. Uh, I just showed you guys that we're getting power, DC power to that motor. And you can check the values with the manufacturer, but based off my experience, this is a good a good voltage coming out of that board and that tells me that this motor is bad so there's nothing wrong with the board there's nothing wrong with the outside board uh, for whatever reason this motor which looks like it's a pain in the butt to change is bad so that wraps this one up I'm gonna have to get on the phone with the Pioneer and locate that motor Okay, everybody, so what we did was we showed up, uh, we looked at the error code that that mini split was throwing. It was throwing an E3 error code.
on the back side of that unit when you flip that filter access door up on the bottom of that access door uh, i'm going to put a picture up for you guys but it's going to show you what the fault codes are and what they mean and uh, sometimes you can get in for a fun time if the bad if the board outside is bad it could throw all kind of crazy codes so it's always important to verify you know what the issue is to verify power you know go into the component and uh, so forth so uh, showed up error codes e3 that's a lack of airflow or no airflow I think it's actually stated below 30% of airflow uh, I've seen that code with just dirty uh, blower wheels where that, that scoop and that blower wheel gets clogged up from surface dust and now it's, it's blowing around like this which is causing lack of airflow but in this scenario the blower motor was bad I verified power coming out the board to make sure that the board wasn't bad um, and then once I unplugged that blower to test the pins to see if power was coming out I had it set to cool, the outside unit started running, everything was operating the way it should, uh, even with that, that motor harness unplugged from that board. Appreciate you guys watching, I hope you liked that, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something today, uh, and if you can do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we will catch you on the next one. Peace.